Well, thank you, Faye, for that beautiful, beautiful song. That is an incredible child of God that you just heard singing. She really loves the Lord with all of her heart. What a blessing she is. As I indicated in the opening of the program, I'm going to be talking about the blessed, glorious hope that we have in Christ Jesus. You know, this life can really be very cruel to us. We... We just never know what's just around the turn in the road, just around the corner, just over the hill. Life is filled with so much uncertainty. We are unable to anticipate the things that may be ahead of us. And that's true in our personal lives. That's been true in my life for all these years. And I'm sure that it's been true in your life. Sudden, unexpected things can turn your life upside down and can leave you in despair and turmoil in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, I was thinking about the condition of the world that we live in today. I was thinking about all of the pain and the sorrow and the suffering and the despair that we have in the world that we're living in today. We see the newsreels. We see the camera as it catches, as it captures the people in the war-torn areas of the world where an explosion has just taken place and their loved ones that were there with them just a few moments ago are no longer to be found. They've been blown into oblivion. We see the despair on the faces of the children in Bangladesh, in the Sudan, where they are starving, where the malnutrition has caused their little stomachs to be so swollen. And we see the hopelessness in the eyes of the, of, of, of the parents who are unable to provide even the basic necessities for their children. You know, when we look at all of these things and we can, when we consider all of these things, it makes us understand what St. Paul was saying when he uttered the words, if we only have hope in this life, we are of all men most miserable. Right now, the uncertainty, the economy of the United States, the jobless rates that has soared so high and continues to soar and no expectation of it coming down anytime soon. People have been displaced from their homes. They've lost their homes. The foreclosures have put many people on the street. They've lost their jobs. And through the stock market crash a few years ago, many people have lost their life savings. There's a lot of despair. There is a lot of hopelessness in the world today. But I'm glad to say, my friends, that after being a student of the Word of God for over 50 years, I'm glad to say that due to my searching and my research, thousands of hours pouring over the Scriptures, I'm glad to say that I'm a Christian. And I'm glad to say to you today that our hope is not confined merely to this world and to this life as we now know it. Our hope transcends this life. That is, those of us who are Christians, those of us who know Christ as our Savior. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he said, Now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is love. 
the blessing, the expectation that we have in, through hope in Christ Jesus. Paul said that this hope that we have in Christ is a joyful expectation of eternal salvation through and by the Lord Jesus Christ. Our hope transcends this veil of tears and sorrow and heartbreak and calamity and turmoil and trouble and tribulation and upheaval. Our hope transcends all of that. It is an expectation that is eternal. In Ephesians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul again talks about the people in the world that are without God and without hope. He says, you have no hope. You were in the world, and you were without God. I can think of no more, I, I can think of no more of a bleak picture than that, than to be in the world and to be without God and without hope. That's where so many people are today. I was talking with a young lady just this morning, who has been in the throes of a divorce. She has just come through the trauma of a divorce. And they tell me that a divorce can be just as traumatic as losing someone through death, as losing a spouse through death. Well, I tell you, if it's any more painful than that, I don't know how anyone deals with it. Because the pain and the distress that I've been in in recent days, having lost my wife, has been unbearable. And it's all I can do to keep...